In this video, we are looking at the concept of foreign aid, and we want to determine whether or not uh, it's advantageous to countries that are receiving foreign aid. Now, this has been a policy of Western countries for decades, giving foreign aid to developing countries in Africa, South America, and Asia. And it's important for us to understand this from the standpoint of both the donor and the receiver. Right? So let's take a look at this concept of foreign aid. The question we are trying to answer is, is it advantageous? And uh, by answering that question, we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages. And hopefully you get a better sense of uh, the whole idea of foreign aid. And you can make a determination as to whether or not it's advantageous. Okay, so let's begin by looking at the definition of this key concept. So the definition will help us understand what this concept is all about. By definition, we're talking about the transfer of funds, capital, services, food, for example, or goods, or simply goods. It could be uh, agricultural goods. It could be goods uh, to um, build refineries. It could be goods to build roads and so forth. So the transfer of funds, money, capital, it could be economic capital, social capital, it could be a political capital, services, food and goods from one country to another intended to assist the receiving country to address specific challenges for the benefit of the citizen, right? So in principle, this is for the benefit of citizens in principle. And this is very important to understand because the countries that are giving these monies and these capital and services are doing so with the hope that it's going to trickle down to the citizens and help the common citizens uh, walk in the streets of the country. All right, so let's take a look at the advantages here. So the first one says provide capital to address specific challenges and improve cash flow, right? When money comes into the country, it's improving the cash flow of that country. This is very important. And this is very important because cash flow does a lot of the good things. It pays salaries, it uh, improves infrastructure, uh, uh, spending value to boost the economy in many ways and so forth. So foreign aid provides capital to address specific challenges. It could be a challenge of infrastructure. It could be a challenge of education, building more schools. It could be a challenge of uh, healthcare, strengthening the healthcare of the country, etc. And, and that's a good thing. When you have money as a country, to uh, do all of those things, to accomplish those things, to build uh, infrastructure, to have a functioning healthcare system, to have a functioning educational system, that's a good thing. And foreign aid uh, will go a long way to help countries that are really struggling to achieve those goals. So it's good from that standpoint. It builds capacity, right? So along the same lines, it builds capacity. And when we talk about capacity, we talk about economic, political, social, cultural capacity in the receiving country. And capacity is good because capacity means self-sufficiency. That's what it means. So capacity is good. So when foreign aid comes in, it builds capacity in many, many regards, in many ways. It could be economical, it could be political, it could be social, cultural, uh, and even maybe military capacity in the receiving country. It enhances stability in the receiving country because when there's money, when money is flowing and when uh, salaries are being paid and when money goes to support infrastructural development, when money goes to support economic development, giving loans to citizens, for example, microfinancing uh, happening and making sure that uh, the obligations of the country, financial obligations of the country are being met, the military is being funded appropriately and so forth, it creates stability in the country, right? So the inflow of cash, we'll go back to the first advantage here, the inflow of cash is tied with the second, which is building capacity, is tied with the third as well, which is enhancing stability in the receiving country by ensuring that you have the capital to fund projects, by ensuring that you're able to take care of the basic needs of your citizens so that they don't revolt, they don't uh, hit the streets protesting and destabilizing the country and causing chaos. Uh, it means that you have the ability to run an effective government. You have the money to uh, hold elections. You have the money to support uh, the institutions of government, the judiciary, the executive, the, the parliament, and other institutions and organizations that make the, make the country functional. There is money for all of those things. So that's what we mean by enhancing the stability of the receiving country, reducing poverty and unemployment if used properly. And this is very important as well, right? It reduces poverty. Why? Because it creates employment. When you have an influx of funds, of cash, you, you are able to establish 
you know, uh, agencies, organizations, create employment, make the environment conducive for businesses to come in and create employment as well and invest in that economy, that's reducing poverty. That's reducing unemployment. That's creating employment. That's moving people from poverty to the middle class. And that's a good thing, right? So foreign aid then reduces poverty, creates employment, right? And again, it's very important to add the, uh, the, the proviso uh, if used properly. If used properly, it can achieve these goals. And if the foreign aid is substantial, it can really impact different aspects of the economy. It strengthens, the last point here is strengthens infrastructure in the receiving country. So foreign aid strengthens infrastructure. And by infrastructure, we mean bridges, roads, airports. You have telecommunication system that's functional, a water system that is functional. You have uh, institutions that are functional, uh, health institutions, education institutions that are functional, and building uh, the capacity to be able to undertake those tasks. Right? So foreign aid can support that. Billions of dollars of foreign aid can support that. Again, if used properly to build infrastructure, to maintain infrastructure. We have stadiums, parks, for example, uh, which are parks are very, very instrumental today to relieve stress of citizens where citizens can go and relax. You have, you know, fine beaches that are developed and so forth. Uh, you have um, the malls, you know, those are things that, that keep society going. Those are things that a society needs and citizens need to be functional, to be able to interact, to build a community, uh, to be able to be an effective society. So in terms of advantages, it provides capital to address specific challenges, right? And again, inflow of cash, improves cash flow, which is very important for a country to survive. And even on an individual level, uh, if you don't have cash flow while well, you are in trouble, you have to have some means of cash flow. And foreign aid does that for the receiving country. They receive cash flow. It provides capital, to address specific challenges, it could be health, it could be education, it could be uh, in terms of uh, economic development, etc. Builds capacity in many areas, economics, uh, in the economy, in politically and uh, socially, uh, culturally as well. Enhances stability, reduces poverty and unemployment if used properly and strengthens infrastructure in the receiving country. These are the advantages of foreign aid. And again, it's important for us to understand this and put this in context. Foreign aid has clear advantages. It's not all bad news. It has clear advantages, and we've just highlighted some of the advantages. And again, if countries use the funds properly, they are able to achieve these advantages. But on the other side, it undermines sovereignty, right? So foreign aid as a disadvantage undermines sovereignty. If you are receiving money from countries, it undermines the sovereignty. It suggests that you're not able to take care of yourself. It suggests that you don't have the ability and the capacity to take care of yourself and you depend on others. So it undermines sovereignty, right? And, and this is very important because it ties in with the third point here, undermines sovereignty. We're going to come to that in a minute. Breeds corruption. A lot of money in the economy is circulating. Well, then it breeds corruption. There's a tendency for corruption to, to fester. Uh, and there's a tendency for people to siphon the funds, to use it for personal purposes, to take it overseas, lodge it somewhere in the, in a foreign bank, etc. There's that tendency if the, the discipline is not there. If the people are corrupt, if their leaders are corrupt, there's a tendency for it to breed corruption because where there's money and there's no discipline, corruption festers, right? And so it's important for us to get that point as well. On the minds, uh, sovereignty breeds corruption, causes undue dependency on donor countries. And again, this is tied in with the sovereignty issue here, right? It causes undue dependency on donor countries. What does that mean? It means that you're not able to do anything for yourself. Just like giving an adult money, food, clothing, and all uh, the adult needs, right? Uh, the tendency in the adult is not going to work hard because they're getting those things. The things that they need are being given to them free. That means, you know, there's no motivation for them to work to get those things for themselves. It's the same way you think about countries. It's the same concept that comes to play here. So causes undue dependency on donor countries, and donor countries take advantage of that. The donor countries take advantage of that. How do they do that? They can interfere in the internal affairs of a country.
because they are the ones that are you know, sponsoring the major programs in your country. You're dancing to their tune. They, they beat the drums and you dance essentially. And that's what it comes down to. So the donor countries can interfere and says it gives rise to political influence, right? So it gives rise to political influence by the donor country, the Western countries that are donating this money. There's no free lunch, as it's often said. There are always strings attached. And one of those strings will be political interference. If you as a receiver has a policy that the donor doesn't like, they can influence you to drop that policy. They can influence you to change laws that they don't like, uh, that's not in line with their values. Um, and they can threaten to withhold foreign aid. And that's how it gives rise to political interference. And so because you, the receiver, needs the money, well, you say, all right, not a problem. We will change the law. We we'll change that policy. We'll tell us what to do and so forth. These things are real. And they've happened time and time again, Western countries interfere in affairs of uh, poorer countries, uh, developing countries because they, they support their needs, because they send foreign aid and they're able to uh, uh, detect to them what they want. And finally, unintended consequences. For example, it could support oppressive regimes. That's not the purpose for foreign aid. Most Western countries will not send foreign aid to developing countries for the purpose of those countries to oppress their citizens. Uh, but those could be the unintended consequences because it can support detectors, it can support a repressive government, they can use the money to buy arms to turn against their own citizens. And this is real. This happens all the time as well. We've seen many examples of how foreign aid is used to prop up oppressive regimes across the world. So unintended consequences, right? Because again, the opportunity is there, the money is there, and it can be used for the wrong purposes. All right, so intense disadvantages undermine sovereignty because you don't have the capacity to sustain yourself, right? You depend on others. It breeds corruption. Where there's plenty of money and lack of discipline, it breeds corruption. Causes undue dependency on donor countries, right? So now you are depending on the Western countries to give you money. You don't generate any internal revenues. You are very, very lackadaisical about you know, uh, going out to attract investors to come into your country. You don't want to do partnership with other countries, trade relations, etc., because you're getting millions of dollars from donor countries uh, in the form of foreign aid. Right. So again, causes undue dependency, gives rise to political influence. Right. So you sell your country essentially because they tell you what to do. They strike down laws from afar. They tell you to implement this policy and that policy. Sometimes they tell you to devalue your currency because it's too high as a condition, right, for receiving the foreign aid. And sometimes they give condition for receiving the foreign aid by saying, if you don't do this, we will withhold our money, etc. And sometimes the countries that need it, they say, well, let's just comply or just fall in line and so that we will get the money coming and we can meet our needs internally. And finally, unintended consequences once again could support oppressive regimes. So when we talk about foreign aid then, it's important to consider the advantages and disadvantages. Now again, whether it's good or bad depends on the number of factors. Depends on the country we're talking about, the leaders in those countries, the citizens of those countries. And it's a lot of a lot of consideration is given to this. The question is, is foreign aid good for developing countries? The answer is yes, and the answer is no. It's important for you to take a holistic view and then also be mindful that this is on individual basis, an individual case. If for some countries it's good for them, so they turn it around quickly, they use it very well to support infrastructure, to support their citizens, to support programs. For some countries, they use it in the wrong way. They misuse the funds and they use it to undermine their own people. So hopefully this is helpful in understanding the importance, the understanding the uh, sometimes disadvantages uh, of foreign aid and uh, understanding how it plays out amongst countries.